All right, happy Saturday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's that time again, time for a look at what's brewing, what's cooking out there in the tropics. One very dangerous hurricane to tell you about on this Saturday, and we do have another tropical wave that could develop. So let's get right to it. The good news, we're getting closer and closer to the end of hurricane season, but that doesn't officially happen until November 30th. So we've got a little more ways to go. And until then, there's always the chance that we could get one of these systems in just the right conditions and it could blow up. And that's exactly what has happened with Hurricane Roslyn. This storm was not impressive at all just a few days ago, but now it is a major hurricane. In fact, a category four hurricane with winds, maximum sustained winds, at least around 130 miles per hour. So that that is very strong wind, damaging wind. That is wind strong enough to cause lots of structural damage across portions of Mexico as it likely will make landfall early tomorrow. Several inches of rain could lead to flooding. So this is certainly a pretty bad situation for West Central Mexico. We've got movement at this point to the north northwest around nine miles per hour pressure at 954 millibars and this is as of the latest 4 p.m. advisory so Roslyn very well organized right off of the coast of Mexico basically that west central coast and it is expected to remain a major hurricane as it starts to make landfall likely early tomorrow. So I want to zoom in and go over this track with you at this point around 1 a.m. Sunday, still a major hurricane, likely maybe a little weaker down to a category three, but that is still considered a major hurricane. Of course, major hurricane category three or higher. That means a lot of damage can take place with the flooding rains, the storm surge, the wind gusts over 100 miles per hour. So certainly not good news for the Puerto Vallarta area. That is where this storm is likely headed. Puerto Vallarta hurricane stats. Let's talk about it. Well, basically, over the last several years, there have been very few of these major hurricanes to hit. In fact, only three other Category 3 plus hurricanes since about 1987. So certainly dealing with a pretty rare situation here, and this is likely going to cause a lot of damage across portions of Mexico. So early tomorrow morning, it is nearing that west central coast as a category three likely winds around 120 miles per hour. Then as we go into Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m., wind gusts near 70 miles per hour. So it will quickly weaken to a tropical storm because it's moving over very mountainous terrain. So that's going to kind of tear it up, rip it apart pretty quickly. But over Overall, it is going to cause potentially a lot of damage upon that initial landfall. Then it will quickly weaken to a remnant low as we go into early next week on Monday. But the interesting thing about this is the fact that some of that moisture may get kicked in our direction because notice the movement right now to the north northwest. But over the next few days, that movement will shift to the north northeast. And where are we? We are off to the north and east of this system. So overall, we will watch where that moisture goes to see if it will start to bump up our rain chances for early next week. But here's what you need to know about Roslyn, Hurricane Roslyn at this point. It should reach the west central coast of southern Mexico early Sunday as a major hurricane. So that is big time category three or higher, and it will likely be a pretty strong category three by landfall tomorrow morning. It could bring up to 10 inches of rain for parts of Mexico, along with some storm surge some strong wind gusts and flash flooding. Storm surge will likely be some of the biggest threats, the biggest dangers across West Central Mexico as this makes that initial landfall. And then as it pushes into central or interior portions of Mexico, still that flood threat and that threat for landslides will still stick around as well. So that's what's going on in the eastern Pacific. But now I want to switch gears and talk to you about what's going on in the Atlantic Basin. Not a whole lot to talk about, but we are still monitoring this one tropical wave basically in the central Atlantic. Now it is still pretty far east of Bermuda, still well away from the United States, and it's still fairly disorganized. It's this area of showers and storms that you see here, and the general track will likely take it off to the west northwest. So only about a 10% chance for tropical cyclone formation over the next 48 hours, and about a 20% chance that this may become a tropical depression or tropical storm over about the next five days. So overall, this system not looking that impressive, but 
we'll watch it because there's at least a slim chance that it could develop into something more interesting and start to get more of those tropical characteristics. It could start to develop more of a well-defined center of circulation, and that is when we would start to be a little bit more concerned. But for now, not really looking like it's going to do anything much over the next 24 hours. But as we go through next week, we will be monitoring to see if that tropical wave can develop into something more. Typically, this is the time of the hurricane season where we start to see fewer and fewer storms. But of course, as you can see with Category 4 Hurricane Raza, we can still get some pretty dangerous and pretty significant systems out in the tropics. So we'll continue to monitor Roslyn, of course, as I was mentioning, as it moves into Mexico and makes landfall tomorrow morning, it will quickly weaken, but some of that remnant moisture may boost our local rain chances early next week. We'll have a cold front moving in late Monday into Tuesday. We'll have what's left of Roslyn heading our way. So that means a chunk of moisture, that Pacific moisture heading our way. And of course, that spells the need for the rain gear. So prepare for some increased rain chances for us here in Southeast Texas for Monday and Tuesday, especially as far as names for the Pacific. Of course, we are on Hurricane Rosalind now, but if we get a few more storms to develop, the next name on the list will be Seymour, Tina, Virgil, then Winifred. As far as the Atlantic Basin, we've been steadily moving our way down this list. And the next name on the list, if we get an Atlantic tropical system, would be Lisa, Martin, and then Nicole. But hopefully we won't have to use those. We are hoping for a quiet finish to this 2022 hurricane season. Speaking of this year's hurricane season, of course, we have passed that peak of September 10th, and we are in the last part of October. We still got to get all the way through November before we can breathe a sigh of relief and say, it's over. There's no shot for us getting hit by any of these tropical systems. So the chances are getting lower. Historically, much lower shot for a tropical depression, tropical storm, or a hurricane late October through November. Notice, Back around early mid September, that's where we peaked. So a very high chance then, but now much lower, but it's still not 0%. So until then, we will keep giving you these updates So make sure to tune in to our YouTube channel every day. We keep you updated on what's happening in the tropics. Also, when you're out and about, when you're on the go, make sure you have the Fox 26 weather app downloaded. So much helpful information on there. Anything you need to know about what's going on with the weather, Guess what? You can find on the Fox 26 weather app. So head to the app store, download that if you haven't already. Whether you have an iPhone or Android, it is available for any phone or any tablet. So make sure you grab that. Also, don't forget to check me out on Twitter, Ramesha Shade TV, Facebook at Ramesha Shade Weather, or Instagram at Ramesha Shade. All right, enjoy the rest of your weekend and stay safe.